Kanda here and Accra also live on our numerous affiliates across the country. Around the world, we're streaming live on 3news.com. Download the tuning app from the Google Play, Apple iOS Store, and listen to us on the go. Coming up this afternoon, organized labor convenes emergency meeting over new domestic debt exchange program terms as proposed by finance minister. We get details of the new terms and also engage uh, some of the labor groups ahead. Also, Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly engages transport operators in the wake of agitations against efforts to streamline the transport sector. We're live in Kumasi shortly. Flag bearer, aspirant of the new patriotic party, Kwabna Ejapons, called out party officials engaging in divisive politics. We have details as he asked President Ikufuaro to act swiftly in calling his appointees to order. So once you see that, and these are all the president's appointees, mm -hmm. then it begs the question. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's not him just saying it. He should have authorized the chief of staff to call them to order. Okay. Yeah, that's what he should do. And much later, we bring you updates on meeting of ECOWAS chiefs of staff of a military takeover in Niger. Details if you stay with us for the next 30 minutes. Pleasure that you could be a part of this afternoon's bulletin. It's streaming live on Facebook. Our handles 3FM927. Same handles on Twitter as well. 3FM927. I am Eric Mawinagbeta. Let's get into the details. And we're starting off on the front of Labour this afternoon because the leadership of organized Labour, they're convened in an emergency meeting this afternoon to consider latest proposal from government to include pension funds in its domestic debt exchange program. Government last week tabled a new offer after organized labor rejected its proposal in April to include pension funds in the second phase of the debt exchange program, which is a key requirement under the $3 billion uh, loan extended credit to facility as secured by the Ghanaian government with the IMF and the latest offer aims to exchange approximately 31 billion CDs in principal amount eligible of bond bo, eligible bonds for a package of new bonds. Labour Affairs correspondent Daniel Opoku has a bit more on this for us on this uh, planned meeting joins us on the telephone yeah, lines with a bit more. Uh, Danny do we know what has informed the new offer? We know already that there's been rejections in the past. Hello? Yes, Daniel, can you hear me? Hello? Right, appears we have uh, challenges with the telephone lines to Liberal Affairs correspondent Daniel Lepoku. But just to walk you through the details uh, of this new offer and a statement uh, from the finance ministry we can call it a letter somewhat dated the 31st of july so just three days old uh, where it was addressed to the pension fund trustees and organized labor in a whole seeking to get their buying on this new proposal as offered by government so uh, the proposal uh, according to the finance ministry, has been carefully crafted to facilitate the execution of the MOU while addressing the government's financial needs. And the proposed debt exchange entails exchanging the current holdings of Treasury bonds, Esla bonds, and Dutch bonds for new tranches of the currently outstanding existing exchange uh, series issued in February 2023 and matured in 2027 and 2028 respectively uh, with the term exchange bond 20, 2027 and exchange bond 2028 and together the exchange bonds featuring an average coupon of 8.4% with an exchange ratio of 1.15 times thus entailing an increase in patrimonial value. Daniel Opoku is our Labour first correspondent. He's joined us on the telephone line uh, again. Uh, Daniel, I was asking about uh, what it is that has been the position of organized labor with regards uh, restructuring their pension funds. We know they have been rejecting offers from government in the past. Right, yes, exactly so what you have said, Bowen. Consistently, labor has rejected 
um, the proposals being tabled by government. The last meeting they had was about a month ago, where for the, for the second time or the third time, Labour said that we're not going to agree to the proposal that government tabled before them. For that reason, a committee was set up where you have leadership of Kloksak, you also have leadership of NAT and other key sector unions who participated in the committee. Now, this, this, this today, what you are gathering is that government has been able to review the previous DDEP program, and it is it has stable before organized labor. So organized labor meeting this afternoon to discuss the contents of, of, of the DDEP. But what we, we have been able to gather out of the new deal is the fact that one, the new deal is seeking to um, give a maturity period between 2027 to 2028. It's one of the key factors, key indicators to the new deal. And secondly, the new deal says that all those labor unions with bonds who will be enrolled or rolled up to the new deal are likely to receive between two to five percent for them just voluntarily joining the new deal. And secondly, um, they have up to the end of 18th August for all bonds to be on the voluntary to be on the new deal. So if you're a labor union and really you want to join the, the new deal that government has proposed you have up to the 18th of August, then finally between 25th and 28th, that would be the settlement date. And the settlement date says that beyond the 28th, any labor union who joins or any labor union that joins the, the new deal will not have the capacity to withdraw. It's the sole responsibility or the sole right of government to determine who should withdraw after the new deal. So these are the proposals in the deal, and labor will meet in this afternoon to discuss whether they accept for his last time, or they are going to reject it for a new one to be brought to them. But what is the front of labor looking like? We know that in somewhere April, where there was an offer of some sort, there was division right. on the front. Cloxa came out openly that they had accepted the deal when TUC and other organized groups were not in support. Does it look like this time around, all of labor are in support or in disagreement to the latest proposal? Right. So what we, again, what we are able to read from um, the from, from the corridors of labor is that they are likely to accept this particular deal that government has brought to them, based on them setting up a committee and the committee giving them a briefing. So when we speak to them, the general feeling is that we are accepting this new deal, just want government to maintain the trust and also respect the labor rules and regulations that they have stipulated in the new deal, not to bypass and all that. For them, they are ready to take the new deal that the government has. Right then, uh, Daniel, many thanks for providing those details. We'll be looking ahead to that meeting for a bit more. That's Labour Affairs correspondent Daniel Opoku with a bit more insight into expectations of Labour ahead of that meeting or new proposals are stabled by government. I've been hearing my colleague, Labour Affairs correspondent Daniel Opoku, provide a bit more insight on that for us. Well, uh, going to the Ashanti region now, Kumasi to be specific, the central business district, because uh, it's become a hub of some misunderstanding in the last three days following the ban on the operations of tricycles in the area. Yesterday, the tricycle operators mounted roadblocks, amongst many things, because they've been barred from operating at the central business district of the Ashanti region. Well, uh, there was some headway made yesterday. It appears that the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly is seeking to meet all relevant stakeholders to... Uh, iron out all grievances. Ibrahim Abubakar has been following that for us since Monday. He's joined us on the telephone line with a bit more. Ibrahim, talk to us. Has this meeting happened already or it's yet to happen? Well, Mauna, the meeting is still in progress, um, but um, this morning uh, or this afternoon, you go around the CBD and it appears KMA has softened their stance when it comes to the enforcement. Um, you see most of the tricycle operators moving freely, conducting the operation. KMA says it has moved the enforcement to um, next week, which is Monday. It starts on Monday. So they will use this week to educate them and try to convince them to also understand the need um, for them to restrict their movement within the central business district. Like you rightly said, um, there is, they are currently in an engagement with not only leadership of the tricycle operators, 
but leadership of all the transport union, they are saying that um, by October 1, they are not just restricting the movement of the tricycle operators alone, but they are doing it in phases. From them, they will move to the taxis, to the short trucks, and all other commercial vehicles. So by October 1, they are going to take their data, issue um, vehicles with commercial vehicles with stickers. So those who have the stickers will, will be the, those who can have access to the central business district. If you don't have that sticker, you wouldn't be able to go there. So these are some of the things they are trying to enlighten them on and they need to also make sure that we all join hands to sanitize our roads and also decongest um, the central business district. And from what it is that you've been picking, does it look like the operators will be leaning towards a general understanding even uh, following what happened yesterday? Well, for the trans transport, a tricycle operators, um, it's going to be difficult because they are still resisting that move. They are telling KMA that if indeed it wants to um, re regulate their movement or restrict their movement and also ensure that fewer vehicles move within the CBD, then some of them should also be considered and be issues tickets. So it shouldn't be only trotters and taxis alone. If at least 500 of them are also issues tickets, then they will know that um, these 500 will be able to have access to the CBD and the rest will have to work elsewhere. Uh, it shouldn't be. If, if KMA does not listen, then it means they are the only ones being targeted. But KMA is saying, well, they have that in mind, that they will issue them with tickets. But for now, they have to move all of them out before they sit down with them because it appears the tricycle operators um, do not also have a, a united front. They don't have one leadership. They come in various unions and various leaders coming to their office. So they want them to all come together. Then they can sit down with them and know that these are the number of um, tricycle operators they will issue with tickets. So... Uh, we don't know. For now, like I said, they have relaxed on the enforcement, so they are operating freely. That's how come you are not hearing any noise. Right. If by Monday they decide to um, begin with the enforcement again, and then we will know whether they will comply or they will still resist. Right, Sandy Brian Mabubaka with those details there for us, uh, explaining the situation. That meeting is ongoing. I'm sure we'll get details of it uh, subsequently. Let's do politics now because a flag bearer aspirant of the new patriotic party, Kwame Japan, has taken on some government appointees who've declared support for Vice President Dr. Mahamadou Baumia in the party's upcoming presidential primaries, describing their actions as poor and wrong. The former General Secretary of the NPP expressed war and said the divisive internal politics can ruin the party's chances ahead of the next general elections. This comment follows the president's rejection of claims that state resources are being used to support and finance Dr. Baumia's campaign to give him a preferential treatment. Here's exactly what the president said yesterday when some party communicators called on him. The assertions, and it was made by your director, that by some in the party that uh, government is somehow allegedly, quote, intimidating or, quote, coercing party faithful to throw their support behind one of the presidential aspirants. And we have to be open about it. The allegation is being made that the government is putting all this authority behind the vice president. I want to say in very clear terms to you and to the world, it is a false and malicious narrative. There's not a single truth to it. Well, the president there, but Kwame Japan says the president must task the chief of staff to call all government appointees supporting the candidature of Dr. Baumia to order. You see, um, action speaks louder than words, in my view. And I think this situation has been created because of what was happening. A lot of and I mentioned this some time ago, a lot of CEOs, which again, I think it goes against the grain of governance principles, because when you are a public officer, a director general of, of lotteries, or you are the managing director of state transport, or the CEO of Bui Power, 
I don't think it lies within you to go to the party headquarters and pick up a form for a candidate. It's wrong. You may support the person quietly. That is fine. I mean, everybody can support someone. That's fine. But when you become a managing director or CEO of Ghana Gas or GNPC, Free Zones Authority, you are not allowed to do that. State Housing Corporation, you, you are a public officer. You serve the whole of Ghana. You can't be actively involved in divisive politics, even at the, the internal elections level. And that is just simply the fact. And I was stating the fact. When I state the facts and people get uncomfortable with it, they think I'm attacking someone. I'm not. I think that if you want to support the person, like others are supporting me, mm -hmm. they haven't come out openly, but they, they send me reasonable resources for me to be able to go around. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what offices they occupy in the government. That's right. Or wherever. Mm -hmm. You understand. So I think it is wrong. The optics is poor on governance for public officers, CEOs of organization to relinquish their work and be roaming around campaigning with a candidate. And if that is wrong, we have to say it. Okay. That's the kind of culture we need to build. The new mm. politician, the, the new Ghanaian. Mm. So once you see that, and these are all the president's appointees, mm -hmm. then it begs the question. Mm. You understand? So it's not him just saying it. He should have authorized the chief of staff to call them to order. Okay. Yeah, that's what he should do. Uh, that's Kwame Japon, flag bearer, aspirant of the NPP, speaking to Johnny Hughes on uh, 3FM Sunrise. Professor Smart Sapon is a political researcher uh, with the uh, Kumasi Technical University. Uh, let's pick thoughts from him briefly on uh, these comments by Mr. Japon. Many thanks, Prof, for speaking to us this afternoon. It does appear that the conversation of support base for the vice president is one that could make or break the party. The president denied it categorically, yet here one of the aspirants again asking that actions speak louder than words. Well, uh, Marwin, a very good afternoon to yourself and our cherished listeners. Uh, I've listened to Kwabne J. Japon, and uh, I think he makes a lot of good points, uh, only that he wish the situation becomes the ideal situation. All right. I, I think I get the feeling that he, he wishes that the situation becomes an ideal situation where uh, those officers he refers to CEOs and co would decide to be neutral through to the end of the process. Uh, it has its own advantages and it has its own disadvantages. At the point in time, they may want to make known their position so that their followers, they can maximize the, the aspirants they support. Uh, to the extent that they will leave their work, leave Accra, follow the CEO, uh, the, the aspirants, wherever they go, that is something that is also worth noting. Uh, uh, government chief of staff or whoever is supervising these CEOs must also call them to, uh, to, to order. I think to those extent, he makes a lot of points. But to wish that everybody remains neutral through to the end, uh, that would be a very wild wish especially when I know if I put my, my words into uh, that of one of the aspirants to maximize his chance of winning, I think at a point that temptation will come that I do so to maximize the chance of the aspirant I support. But it shouldn't be at the expense of leaving your work, following mm. that person round, mm. uh, all those things. Yeah. But some can argue that it's not just been... The, the, the vice president, but just away from this, the, the crux of it is that it does appear that it could be a serious challenge for the party ahead of its 26th August con conference and then the, the real deal come November. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, at all points, there will be majority decision against minority decision. And if you are a loyal member of an association, and your, your view happen to be among the minority, you have to be willing to change your position and stand with the majority when the majority decides. And so at this point, it is a competition. Uh, there's some tension in town, uh, admittedly so, and uh, it's allowably so. I hope uh, by 26th of August or even 4th of November, when the dust settles, the views that will represent the minority would have to 
gracefully give up and put their strength and support behind the view that will appear my uh, majority right so that in the interest of the party they claim to be loyal to they can move uh, forward prof i appreciate that you could speak to us Good. That's Professor Smart Sapon speaking to us this afternoon here on the news on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming live on Facebook, 3FM 927. Our top stories this afternoon, organized labor expected to meet this afternoon over new proposals of their pension funds to be used for government's debt restructuring program. Uh, we'll look ahead to that meeting. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly currently are in a meeting uh, in a bit to deal with agitations following the outright ban on the operations of tricycles in the central business district we've been bringing you details of flag bearer aspirant of the npp kwabna e japon calling out the party for engaging in divisive politics we're just staying with politics a while longer because chair of the national democratic congress johnson the city kitchen says the council of state has departed from its original mandate of advising the president on matters of national interest making reference to the appointment of three deputy commissioners through the electoral commission the city in Kitesa, the council's reasons given to the ndc after it petitioned it smacks of disappointment i engaged him a short while ago no that those of us who created the council of state we understand its functions better than those who inherited it we created the constitution and we knew why we put the council of state there it has departed from its original mandate and what what the, the whip that broke the camel's back honestly was a letter written in response of the national democratic congress's query to the council as to whether they did any background checks before advising the president to appoint uh, the last batch of uh, uh, electoral commissioners. And their response was quite shocking that as for them as a council, all they do when uh, appointment is proposed to them is that they take the CV of that person and compare it with the requirements of their job. And if it meets the requirements, they recommend its approval. It tells you that they are not interested in any background checks. Background checking and the other considerations about character and other things, they are the reasons why the framers of the Constitution recommended that before the president undertakes such appointment, they must refer it to the Council of State for sober judgment in an environment of uh, non-partisanship. That is why we crafted the, the Council of State to operate as a non-partisan advisor to the president, and we will populate the council with experienced people, people who have distinguished themselves in the service of this nation. That's General Secretary, uh, rather, sorry, a uh, chair of the NDC, Johnson Asidu Nkitia, been a long-standing general of the party. But we're taking you to Parliament this time because the minority, uh, they are increasing the woes of the central bank governor uh, over the recent losses posted by the Bank of Ghana. They say that a future NDC government will drag him before court for financial breaches as the bank or after the bank announced losses. Parliamentary Affairs correspondent Kamala Kluchu will join us with a bit more details because the house is ready in itself to rise uh, later today and the minority has put under the radar the committee report of finance seeking approvals for some 52 million dollars for capacity building in an international fund for agricultural development Kamala Kluchi, so parliamentary affairs correspondent we'll get him shortly to provide a bit more details there for us but on the international front as well has been a growing concerns about stability and security within the west african sub-region that's because there's been a two-day uh, conference by chiefs of staff of various ECOWAS member states as to whether or not a military action in troubled Niger is the way to go. Well, yesterday there were leaked details of orders sent to the Nigerian military to move to the northern part of the country and enforce a no-fly zone in Niger. 
war drums, according to many experts, being beaten uh, even after the coup uh, in the tr West African nation of Niger. We'll get onto the telephone lines and uh, get a bit more details. Adib Sani is a security analyst. Pick his thoughts on this uh, for you as to what exactly it means. The, this two-day meeting uh, that's been ongoing and whether or not enforcing a no-fly zone in Nigeria, or Niger, I beg your pardon, is the way to go for the West African sub-region. Different perspectives from different individuals in relation to this. But we'll pick his thoughts shortly. You're listening to the news here on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming live on Facebook. Our handle is 3FM 927. Same handles on Twitter as well. Uh, 3FM 927. While we wait uh, to connect... Let's bring you some other stories because President Tukufuad has directed the Minister of Interior, Ambrose Derry, to release former Deputy National Security Coordinator Alhaji Salifu Mimina Osman from custody. Alhaji Mimina Osman was one of the three persons found guilty of 14 different charges, including causing financial loss to the state and contravention of the Public Procurement Act in the procurement of surveillance equipment for national security council secretariat he was slapped with a five-year jail sentence in 2020 for his role now in a petition to the office of the president the paramount chief of the Kimbe traditional area Kimbe Ura Haruna Dari Bisma Babangi in Defoso the first pleaded for clemency for al Haji Mimina Osman on grounds of ill health and good behavior that plea has been granted by the president and will take effect uh, pretty shortly if i could just walk you through just a bit more details uh, on that as well pretty much uh, cited all of that but the president exercising uh, the powers uh, conferred on him and just to read provisions in accordance with article 71 72 clause 1 subsection a of the 1992 constitution that's the uh, the provision of the constitution which has been enforced uh, by the president in granting clemency to al haji muni or mimina rather osman listen to the news here on 3fm 92.7 Away from that, though, findings by the Center for Democratic Development, CDD, shows interventions put in place by government to improve the quality of life in cities are not helping. Three metropolitan assemblies and 20 municipalities monitored performed poorly on provision of social services, including education and health. The Ghana cities monitor tracks experiences of citizens residing in some cities in ghana regarding the ease of living to provide strong evidence to inform policy advocacy on governance and service delivery in cities and to contribute to research on urbanization and the quality of development a researcher at cdd gilfred isiama said the municipality with the highest score in terms of social uh, services scored below 13 percent and we'll get details of that if you stay with us here on 3fm 92.7 but that's our bulletin for you this afternoon came to you from Asuri here at adesawikanda in accra or making way for business the very latest from the world of business and there's some news on the front of the cylinder recirculation model after uh, the pilot faces it does appear that it will kick start from september the business team they have all of the juice on that if you stay with us here on 3fm 92.7 as always a lot more news if you log on to 3news.com i am eric mawina egbeta With Cash Out, be a proud winner of lots of cash simply by watching or listening to any of Media General stations. That's right, you are being rewarded for.
for your loyalty. Tune in to all media general brands. TV3, 3FM 92.7, Onia TV, Onia FM 95.1, all in Accra, Akuma FM 87.9 in Kamasi, and Connect FM 97.1 in Takradi. To enter the cash out raffle on your favorite media general station, just dial star 439 hash. Follow the prompt and pick your favorite platform to enter. Voila! You are now eligible to become one of the 10 lucky winners of a cool cash prize. Remember, this is every day, all day, on your favorite media general station. Cash out and win big! This is in partnership with Radio Entertainment Limited. This promo is regulated by the National Lottery Authority on the Caritas Lottery platform. Terms and conditions apply. Let's travel to discover the beautiful sights and sounds of Joburg. Tour the most enchanting wineries of Cape Town and attend the biggest wine event in Africa. Wine X, amongst many other incredible experiences. Be a part of this exclusive getaway from the 21st to the 28th of October. Tour package includes visa facilitations, return flights to Accra, round trip flights to Cape Town and Joburg, hotel accommodation, breakfast and lunch, exclusive tours of the winelands and wine tasting in the Western Cape province. City tours of Cape Town and Joburg, exclusive access to the Grand Wine X event at Santin Convention Center, guided shopping tours and tourist sites, and B2B networking breakfast sessions. Book your place for the trip of a lifetime. Single occupancy is $2,699. US Double occupancy is $2,399. US Special rates are available for couples. Please call 0531 100927 to be a part of the 3FM Get away. Let's discover South Africa with 3FM 92.7 and South African Airways from the 21st to the 28th of October 2023. 3FM Getaway is powered by 3FM 92.7 and in partnership with SAA and supported by TV3. 3FM, your urban lifestyle radio. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us on Business Daily. And coming up this afternoon, phase one of reviewed cylinder recirculation policy kickstarts in September. Meanwhile, LPG Marketers Association cautions the NPA against any attempt to render its members redundant with the introduction of the new model. And rating agency Fitch reveals the banking sector's capitalization weakens as as a result of the large losses imposed on bondholders under the domestic debt exchange program. We have the details in a bit. Please stay. My name is Nana Ikuya Mensa Abrampa. Let's get to the detail now as phase one of the reviewed cylinder recirculation policy will take effect from September. The program will run concurrently with the already existing LPG retail system, which will be phased out progressively. Deputy CEO of the National Petroleum Authority, Perry Curtis Quabla, in a media engagement stated that already four bottling stations are set to commence operations to meet demand under the program. Currently, our monthly consumption of LPG is about 30,000 metric tons. If you put that into the math, 80,000, if, if our bottling plants are able to produce 80,000 um, cylinders per day, if you calculate that per the current demand, we need to feed the system of about 50,000 uh cylinders a day so the capacity is enough and we think that at full implementation this is just the beginning we've issued eight licenses we have four bottling plants that are currently being constructed we're looking to have more bottling plants come up and the capacity is going to increase we ourselves are targeting to increase by 50 percent by 2030 so the issue is starting from September and then growing the value chain as, as we go along. 
Deputy CEO of the National Petroleum Authority, Perry Curtis Kwabla. There. Meanwhile, LPG Marketers Association is cautioning the National Petroleum Authority against any attempt to render its members redundant with the introduction of the new module. Vice President of the Association, Gabriel Kumi, is, however, demanding compensation for its members that will be affected. Existing stations, which has licenses from over seven or eight constitutionally mandated bodies, including MPA, to operate. Uh, if you want to implement the policy, per the way MPA wanted to implement it initially, what it, what, what it, would, it would have meant was that our tanks, our dispensers, our motors, our equipment that, that we are currently using at the stations were going to be rendered redundant. And that was our beef. Either if you want to implement it in that form, you either compensate us uh, before going ahead to do it in that form. Uh, our second option to them was that if you can't compensate that, then you give us time to run the system side by side so that the loans we have taken from, from the banks uh, to buy, to purchase these items, these equipment, we can have time to use those equipment and pay off our loans and gradually shift to the system that you want us to shift to. Gabriel Kume, Vice President of the LPG Marketers Association, in our subsequent bulletins, will be giving you more updates into the cylinder recirculation policy. But let's move away from that. And rating agency Fitch has revealed that the banking sector's capitalization has been significantly weakened as a result of the large losses imposed on bondholders under the domestic debt exchange program. According to the UK based firm, the restructuring of outstanding sovereign debt and impending loan quality problems will add to capital pressures and there's more in the following news desk report. The UK-based firm had earlier said that Ghanaian banks' capital will still weaken significantly as a result of Ghana's sovereign domestic debt restructuring. Fitch estimates the current account deficit will narrow to 0.8% of gross domestic product in 2023 from 2.1% in 2022, supported by suspension of external debt service and improved terms of trade. In 2024 and 2025, the current account deficit should remain moderate at 2.1% and 1.9% of GDP, respectively. This, it says, is supported by suspension of external debt service and improved terms of trade. In 2024 and 2025, the capital account deficit is said should remain moderate. According to Fitch, a reduced current account deficit together with international financial institutions' disbursements and external debt restructuring should enable accumulation of reserves over 2023 to 2025, reaching 2.8 months of current external payments by 2025 from 1.7 months of 2022. And only 0.4 million out of 5.4 million SIM cards that were deactivated following directive from the NTA have re-registered, leaving some 5 million SIM cards yet to re-register. The National Communication Authority, as part of its efforts to sanitize the telecommunication ecosystem and rid it of fraudsters, ordered all telecommunication companies operating in Ghana to deactivate and delete all SIM cards that had not registered with a Ghana card earlier this year. Selom Adadivo is the chief executive of MTN Ghana. Of SIM registration, we've had various directives at different points through 2022. The most significant ones, first of which happened in the last year, where we were asked to assets in customer categories, and that exercise was executed to the level of compliance and that was required by us. In May this year, we barred and disconnected 5.4 million customers, of which we've only gotten back about 0 0.4, so that leaves a good 4.9 to 5 million. The decimal place approximation is the number at the end of June. We continue to put in the right efforts so we can bring back customers who have disconnected, 
ensure that we guide them on how to re-register and restore their connectivity. And this exercise will continue for the next seven months. Salam Adari Vode, uh, he is a chief executive of MTN Ghana, ending it for Business Daily this afternoon. Remember, when you log on to 3news.com, we have more business news updates. My name is Nana Ikuya Mensa Brampa. Have a good afternoon, enjoy your lunch, and see you later on Hot Edition at 540.